Welcome to this tutorial on LT Spice in which we'll look at how to perform an AC simulation. And uh, the first thing we're going to do in this video is to look at how to uh, set up an AC simulation with a quick review on what this actually is all about. And uh, we're going to set up an AC simulation first on this simple RC circuit to the right here. This with the 1K resistor and the 1 microfarad capacitor. And finally, um, we're going to apply this technique to a single transistor amplifier to obtain the frequency response of this amplifier. So what does a AC simulation do? Well, the short answer is uh, it gives you the frequency response of a circuit, and hopefully you're familiar with uh, the concept of a frequency response. But as a quick review, suppose that I want to uh, figure out what this circuit is about. Um, now, I can treat it as a black box and apply sine wave at the input. So I set the uh, frequency to, to some frequency. Uh, set the amplitude again to, to something, and I apply this sine wave at the input of the circuit. At the output, if the circuit meets certain criteria, like lin it is linear and stuff like that, then I'll also get a sine wave of the same frequency at the output, where I can also also measure what the, uh, what the amplitude is. It may not be, th be the same as the input. And I can calculate the gain uh, of the circuit at, for this particular frequency, and it is given by this equation, right? So uh, we take the uh, the output amplitude divided by the input amplitude, and wrap that all in 20 times log 10. That will give me the gain of the circuit in dBs. Now, if I keep repeating this process in the sense of uh, I keep uh, I change the frequency do the measurement again, and keep repeating this for different frequencies, I would get a, a plot of, of the gain versus uh, frequency. And, and that is the frequency response of a circuit. The other thing we need to quickly review is this uh, thing called a Bode plot. And really, it is a plot of the frequency response that we just talked about where the horizontal axis is frequency, the uh, vertical axis is the gain. Now, what's, uh, I guess, um, unique about the Bode plot is that notice that the frequency axis, the horizontal axis, is on a logarithmic scale. And uh, here on the vertical axis, uh, it's on the, it, well, it's, it's plotting the gain in dB. So in a sense, that's also being uh, logged. Um, so that's a quick review of uh, both frequency response and the Bode plot. And now we're going to find the frequency response of a circuit in LT Spice. So here in the LT Spice schematic, I've already got the RC circuit drawn, a 1K resistor, one microfarad capacitor, a voltage source, and I've labeled the output node with the name Vout. The first thing we need to do is to right click on the voltage source, go to advanced, and you'll notice on the right hand side here, there's a field for a small signal AC analysis. We want to put one in where the AC amplitude is and click OK. The second thing we need to do is to set up or tell LT Spice to run an AC simulation. So we go to Edit, Spice Analysis. And the second tab in, AC Analysis. Let's use a, uh, there's different types of sweeps here. And by this, it means, uh, well, do we want to specify the number of points um, per octave? per decade or have the um, points linearly spaced out or specify a custom list. So I'm going to select decade here. And for each decade of frequency, I'm going to specify that to LT Spice compute 10 points. Now we'll go from 10 hertz 
to uh, one kilohertz. Okay. And we click OK. Again, um, next to the mouse, there's this command, which I'll need to left click to drop this onto the schematic. We're now good to go in terms of the AC simulation. So go ahead and press run. And so there we have it. It's completed the simulation. Now, if I go back to the schematic window and click on the output node, so you can see the simulated frequency response is right here. And I will maximize this so it'll be easier to see. So as expected, this RC filter gives me a low pass response. So the solid line here is the magnitude response. And it's uh, <clears throat> pegged to this scale here, this uh, vertical axis in dBs. Where is this faint line here, which you can barely see? That's the phase. And it's the scale is on the right hand side of the, of the window here in degrees. So what I want to do here is uh, click on this here so that the cursor window appears. And I'm going to look for where the 3 dB point is. See the uh, 3 dB cutoff frequency is at about 160 hertz. Put the numbers into, the ca into your calculator in terms of what uh, what the theoretical value should be. And you, you'll see that uh, the theory also predicts something very close to this. So uh, not surprisingly, the simulation matches with the, um, the calculation of the theory quite well in this case. Now, before we get into the last part of simulating a transistor amplifier, there are a couple of things worth mentioning. The first thing is this. Um, if you've studied transistors already, you'll probably know that transistors are nonlinear devices. So what I mean by that is if you look at an NMOS, the, uh, the long channel equation, uh, you'll get something like this. Uh, I won't explain what's in this equation, but we will make a note that um, the current through the um, NMOS device here, I sub D, the current through it, is dependent upon the gate to source voltage squared. So it's dependent upon VGS squared. So obviously that makes the relationship between I sub D and VGS nonlinear. If you recall at the, big, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned something about um, the circuit about being um, linear uh, in the AC simulation. And now what happens when we perform an AC simulation is that the transistor model, the transistor is linearized using the small signal approximation. Again, I won't explain what that is. I'm assuming you've taken a course um, in the electronics, but all that means is that uh, if, the, uh, if I have a sine wave at the input at the gate and it is small, I can approximate it with a model like this, where now the current, so the current going through the transistor, the size of D is going to be going through here, is going to depend on uh, VGS now linearly, as you can see in this model. So in an AC simulation, in these SPICE simulators, um, the circuit elements are linearized using the small signal approximation, so everything is linear. Which brings us to the next point. Why did I set the AC amplitude on the voltage source of the input to 1? Because um, if um, we didn't know any better, we would think that while well, a one volt sine wave sounds kind of big, it's going to violate the small signal approximation. But that's not an issue um, in this case, since we've already linearized the uh, transistor into this model. So uh, now that 
the circuit will behave linearly regardless of how big of an input signal we put in. Which leads us to um, the reason why we set the AC input amplitude to 1. Recall that the equation for the gain, for computing the gain in dBs, is given by this equation. The output amplitude divided by the input amplitude. So now you, you see that if we set the input amplitude to 1, this conveniently becomes 20 times log base 10 of V out because V in is just equal to 1. And that's why I was able to just uh, click on the output node before uh, for the RC circuit to simply find, find the gain of the frequency response. All right, so with that uh, in mind, we can now proceed to the uh, transistor simulation in LT spice. So here we have a common source amplifier. You can see that the source of the NMOS transistor is connected through this capacitor, which acts as a AC short circuit. So the source of the NMOS is shorted to, um, or is connected to AC ground. Now the rest of the stuff is um, uh, for biasing and a few th more things I want to note here. If I right click on the NMOS transistor, you'll see that I've picked, you can click click on pick new MOSFET, that's how I found it, but um, you can click on that. And I've chosen the 2N7002 NMOS transistor. The other thing to note is um, just like before, I have set the, um, the input voltage source here with an AC amplitude of one. Finally, if you look at the, go to edit, spice analysis, I have set up the simulation for an AC analysis, 10 points per decade of frequency sweep, and going from 10 kilohertz to 100 megahertz. Let's run the simulation. And I'll click on V out again. It will maximize this window so it's easier to see. So now this is the frequency response of the common source amplifier. And let's use some cursors here. It's cursor number one. I'm going to drag it all the way back to um, 10 kilohertz here. So it's right here. So you can see the um, um, the passband gain of this amplifier is close to 25 dB. If I click on this uh, name here, V uh, parenthesis VL again, a second cursor is going to appear. So cursor number two, which is here, and I can use the uh, um, the delta feature in the cursor window to find where the 3 dB point is. Remember, the 3 dB cutoff frequency is 3 dB below that of the passband gain. All right, so uh, it's around here. So now, now I'm 3 dB below the passband gain of uh, 25 dB. And that 3 dB cutoff frequency is sitting at about 2.5, 2.6 megahertz. So I hope that helps. This was a uh, demonstration on how to use AC simulation in LT Spice to obtain a frequency response of a circuit.